And, uh, I hit the wrong button. There we go. I got the right button now. Steve and I are out hiking to a destination that both of us have been as individual photographers, but now we're doing it together. We're going to the waterfalls. Falls? I guess there is more than one. Uh, yeah, yeah. A nice tree right there. Not enough clutter, or there's clutter behind it though. I thought there would be more fog. Anyway, back to the subject. We're going out here to see if the falls may be uh, still frozen. Last time I came out here, it was frozen. It was like single digits, but I was dressed for it. It's really overcast and misty today. And how far a hike is it to the falls? I think it's a mile, but I'm not sure. That's it's what been I thought. It's a long time since I've done it. Yeah, me too. I thought it was about a mile. So they've changed things out here since I've been out here. It used to be the sign up thing was right here. So we're gonna hike out there and take you with us. So this is where Steve dragged us to. I've been here before. What happened here? Whoa. That's not ice, that's a... It's a critter. Yeah. Anyway, we were looking to have some ice. We're at the falls area. There's a nice picture right there. We're just going to kind of scout down. I think we're going to go down to the the falls, the big part of it first. But uh, we were worried the temperature got close to 50 today. We thought maybe there wouldn't be any ice. I don't know if we want to step on it. It'll probably break through. Yeah, but looks like it. We can hear water running. I don't know if you'll hear it on the video. Okay, I'm going to videotape this because if you fall, it'll it's go fun. viral. Fantastic. I'll laugh with you, not at you. Take my beanie off so my hair can be sticking up while it's... <laughs> oh, one time. I make fun of them. Oh, you did that like you're a pro. You got the big old boots on. Oh, oh, I stepped on that. We got fog around us, so it's kind of adding to the uh, mystique of the picture here. We're going to go down below. I see water just dripping. It's all running underneath the ice. I think your idea of intimate type landscapes might be a good one today. Oh, there's a, piece, a big chunk of ice under the water. Oh, it collapsed on itself. Uh-huh. Cool. Yeah. And I, I've taken a picture below those uh, yellow reed uh -huh. things there, and it turned out fantastic shooting back towards the falls. Hey, right behind Steve, there's the waterfall. That's what we came down here for, and we're both happy that it's frozen. Uh, Steve, what kind of pictures do you think about doing? Uh, boy, I'm not sure, even though I've been wanting to come here for a long time. Uh, I mean, it's not just the falls. I see other things that are around us that make interesting compositions, especially with the mist out here. But somehow, to get this waterfall back here so that you can tell it's a waterfall, that it has lots of, uh, I'll call them stalactites on it, um, I don't know, somehow try to capture that. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. Uh, you're going to have to teach me how, I suppose. 
Uh, but yeah, that's the goal. And maybe getting behind it and shooting up at it. I'll, we'll, I'll we'll try all try sorts of things. Of things. Yeah. yeah. But uh, exposure to the right is going to have to be the, probably the waterfall's the brightest part of our scene. And we want to keep all the detail in the ice. So the background would probably be dark. And the last time I was here, the blue skies was showing through and it didn't make for a good picture. But we're going to go ahead and do some pictures now. And my brain just seems to work better when I go on manual mode. Uh, I was going to try aperture mode, but uh, it works better in manual. So I have my um, f-stop set to 8 because uh, that's a nice sweet spot on the lens. And uh, then the <laughs> shutter speed is at 80, I think is what it is right there. Yeah, it says so right there. Uh, ISO is on automatic. And I'm looking at the back, the, the viewfinder here in the back, and I notice it's very dark. And I don't know if that's my monitor, not bright enough, or if that picture is actually that dark. So we're going to go ahead and click a frame. And it'll take a second to click, and here it goes. And then the histogram will pop up, and it'll tell us what we need to know. And obviously it's, it's bad no matter how I was going to be taking pictures. And so it's, it's definitely a dark photo. It's not the monitor. And so, need to open her up. Nope. F-stop, leave alone. Yeah. Oh, you are opening it up. Yep. I stand corrected. He <laughs> no. was doing it right. I thought you were turning <laughs> your front finger. Uh, okay. And believe. what are you doing? Are you guessing here, Steve? Uh, yeah, I know it's. it wasn't anywhere near close. And so, I, I like to make big... Near close to what? Oh, the histogram. Let's bring that back up. Um when I was do, learning black and white and before we had histograms actually, I would shoot for a bell curve. And I know the bell curve because once I put things in Photoshop, you could see it. Um, so that was my goal was to have a bell curve. And this is way, way off to the left, which just no matter how I would have been shooting, that's not good. And so usually I just drop down two steps at a time. This time I think I just ran it down four. I'm on a tripod, so I'm not worried about any kind of camera shake or anything like that. And I'll snap another photo, and we'll see if it is crawled up the back here. So there goes the photo. And here comes the histogram. And things are improving greatly. Now it's a little bit more of a bell curve, but I think I can still get it a little bit more to the yeah. right. You would take it down just a little slower. One more couple clicks, maybe. Yeah, so I'll take it down two. And then shoot another one. That level, he learned how to use his level on his camera. Of course, here in the Ozark, sometimes when you put it level, everything looks crooked anyway. There you go. Yeah, there we go. And you can see his little picture there in the corner. Where would you focus at? Oh, a third of the way into the photo. So uh, not the dead center, but a little bit further down, figuring at F8, the depth of field will carry enough to the back as well as the foreground. Do you know why we don't shoot at F16? It sounds like an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> oh, airplane, okay. Um, <clears throat> at F-16, our camera lenses start to degrade. Okay. So you can probably get away with 11. In fact, I would shoot another one there, Steve, since that's such a pretty composition. Shoot another one at F-11. At 11, okay. And then check your focus again. That's your focus one-third of the way in. Okay, and he's using back button, button, <laughs> back button focus. And you may have to show, slow down your shutter speed. Yeah, I'm figuring it's going to be off a bit because change one, you should really change the other. Yeah, it fell back a little bit. A little bit. Still not bad. No, I, it probably worked. No more. Uh, we don't have a lot of dynamic range today because of the fog. But we're going to work this composition a little more. My battery's going dead on this camera anyway. But Steve's got the GoPro, so we may have to report on the GoPro. Here's my next composition. I uh, Now, on a regular photo, I've got more room. This is video, but I like the way this rock, the color of this right here, the falls, and then these rocks way back here. So let me take a picture of that. Okay, I'm going to teach Steve here how to focus stack. He's got his composition, which Steve has no problem with composition. Um, he's at 
a uh, tenth of a second at F8. He shot one, and he's going to shoot another just so we can see the histogram. So go ahead and shoot one there, Steve. All right. And he fired away. Now, he has to. He doesn't have a live view. He has to wait for the image to come up. His histogram, I don't know if it's peaking over there. We're going to turn down, speed up his shutter speed a little bit. Right. He's a 10, go, uh, three clicks. Two, three, huh? There you go, and try it again. And if you do it the wrong way, you're not wasting anything. Right, it's not film. All right. Oh, wrong way. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I Show me that image again. No, the image looks good. Yeah. You just got a little, I can't, t yeah, it's still touching the right there, see? But I'd go halfway in between those two. All right. I think that's good. Okay. Okay, the first place we're going to focus is closest thing in your camera. All right. Believe it or not, I was already there. That's okay. something I hadn't done yet. So, fire. It's also on a two-second delay, so any shakes can stop. Right before it fires okay now you're gonna focus uh the rock maybe kind of put it up there a little higher a couple clicks up and fire another one and then you'll have to come over the house and i'll have to show you how to focus back or you know how to do that yet i think we've done it once at mon or bennett spring okay now you're gonna do a little further out i do about five of them there you go right there focus and fire another one this may be overkill. And then I'd focus uh, maybe on the waterfall this time. The waterfall. And then the last one, clear back on the trees. All right. And that's focus stacking. He's manually doing his camera. It's a good camera. I told him he's got a great camera. So one more on the trees. Oh. But I think my compensation is set. Your uh, bracketing? No, the, uh, I forget what it's called. <laughs> exposure like, compensation. Exposure compensation. I just saw a plus three in there somewhere. Okay, look at your. Or minus three. But it doesn't matter because you're on manual as long okay. as you got the histogram right. Go ahead and check it though. He thought, it yes, is. it's minus three. That's why your images were so dark. Yeah, there we so go. So zero it out. Always something. Only something. There we go. Oh, it's such a beautiful... <laughs> I know it'll work. Because he was shooting on manual, he adjusted for it. The exposure compensation didn't make a difference. Does that make sense? Yes. It only works when you're doing aperture or shutter priority. You compensate that way. Okay. So what have we learned, Steve? Um, I kind of think that the exposure compensation made a difference in my viewfinder. It I thought did. everything was really bad. Yeah. But we were trusting the uh, histogram to tell us whether things really were bad and they weren't. And, uh, yeah, be patient with it and compose your photo when you're doing the, the focus stacking. Start in close, move up a little bit at a time. And, and you uh, can do it with a manual camera. Even if you had a manual focus lens, you would just as move your lens just a little bit out each time. But I'm so glad I have a D850 that does it for me. <laughs> it's getting foggier. It's yes. good. This is my composition. Let me uh, turn off all the numbers. I saw this ice right here and I really thought that would make a nice foreground subject it kind of has a ripple and then all the green up there so what i'm going to do first is check my level i hit my info button i'm real close to level when the green lights up that means it's level tilt it down just a little bit the skies are really boring today so i'm trying to keep and i think the sky is just a little lighter than the uh the waterfall so now i'm going to go Back to histogram. Mine's a live view histogram, so what I can do, if I turn it the wrong way, it goes too far. I had it at the right one. I need to turn my f-stop up. I'm going to shoot this about f5, so now i got to turn down my shutter speed. It's touching. I'm going to focus in the foreground here a third of the way. And in fact, yep, 
and I'm going to shoot this one. And there it is. I got a little flashies going on in the top. That means that that's a little bright, but I know with this camera, I'll be able to pull that in if I need to. All right. Dumb question. Okay. Why did you switch to F5 as opposed to leaving Nine on F8? Five. Oh, 9.5? Okay. And just uh, between F11. Because I'm not doing focus stacking now, I'll go down to F8. <clears throat> turning my shutter speed up a little bit. Looking at my histogram. I'm going to focus right here on the foreground. And I'm going to go to focus stacking, which is called focus shifting. Touch menu and start. And uh, you'll see the lens. See it's moving. It's focusing by, focusing by itself. It took three shots. So, on paper, what that should do is it should be one focus in the foreground, one in the midground, and one in the background on paper. Worst case scenario, I use the one in the middle. All right, Mike's going to the top of the falls to work up there, but what I think is just really cool and probably can't see it in the video, is the water flowing kind of inside the waterfall. I mean, it's frozen a little bit above it. It's flowing down there. It is just so cool. Now, Mike, I'll keep this rolling in case Mike slips and slides all the way down. There he is. <laughs> okay, you're gonna get me, you're gonna get tired of me saying this, but I probably wouldn't have came out today. That's why. You need a photo battle buddy because you just you just got it's like a workout buddy there's days you don't feel like going today was one of those days but i am so glad he talked me into this now i don't want to jinx us but i think we got some good images you'll see them if we did and you see them if we didn't <laughs> that's right so here we go we got a hike back we're hiking out can't tell on the video it is getting a little dark it uh when we first came down this trail there wasn't fog when we got down there the fog got better so i'm looking forward to editing these photos everybody likes to go out on a what do they call that chamber of commerce blue sky days but uh we didn't and this is probably been a nice way to i think this is our first shoot this year isn't it steve uh yes so good way to start the year maybe we'll have a wall hanger and again maybe we won't 